Big adaptation now. People are gonna rise like the water. I'm gonna shut this system down. With the voice of my great granddaughter. Saying, it looks like uh, keeping limiting to 1.5 is becoming a dream. Reality is most likely it's going to, uh, you know, we are going to breach it. And it's going to be devastating for other mountains. And if that's the case, I think what we need to do now is seriously look into what does it mean in mountain context. If you look at last three, four uh, years, we are, have, we are seeing one disaster after another, and in some cases unprecedented, the scale and intensity of disaster that we have seen. You know, in most media, we know about the big events, big disaster events. What is often not uh, seen and spoken, but, but very much they are visible uh, behind the scene. You know, this is where everyday uh, experiences, ex everyday suffering that people are uh, doing because of his very slow onset, what you call lack of timely water, the seasonal shifts. These are still not getting that much of a uh, you know, attention. But if you look into that holistic picture, this is going to be very, very difficult for the people living in the mountains. See, the, the, the slower we are in adapting and the slower we are in mitigating the emission reductions, higher are going to be the costs. That's, there's no two points about it. And when you're talking about adaptation, I like to look it into two points. Uh, one, at the moment, we have actually left the burden of adaptation on the most vulnerable communities and countries. The assessments that ISIMO uh, we have done uh, so far, every time we are coming with same conclusion, most adaptations are reactive and autonomous. And if you look at scale, it's individual and community scale. So that what that says is we have left the people to deal with climate change, where they have very little, you know, in terms of uh, contribution in this anthropogenic climate change, they have very little contributions, but they have been left to deal with it. And uh, if you're talking about mountain countries and mountain regions, these are also one of the most vulnerable uh, communities, not only from climate impacts, but also their overall capabilities. I'm just catching up on something that you said. The, the rapidity of change is so fast that mountain people have, yes, they have lived for centuries, but with this rapidity, their ways of knowing is not going to be sufficient. And this is where I think help from uh, not only the government, but also international community is going to be important. Honestly, I think there is this disconnect between grounded reality and what hap what's being talked about. If you look, look about grounded reality, we are talking about extremely incremental because it's not a concept that you can just apply everywhere. You need to contextualize that concept. So I think now we need to be, it's time uh, to be more practical because that is more likely a scenario where we are going. Adaptation now, people gonna rise.